and welcome back to my channel. Today is all about Lomography's new film. Now, admittedly, the case has seen better days, but I have already shot it, as you would have just seen. So you're gonna see some footage of me shooting it, and I'll give my first impressions of this new black and white film. But before we get onto that, I just wanna quickly discuss my zine, and I promise this is the last time I'll talk about my zine. But the support I received for it was, caught me way off guard. It was way more than I thought, and yeah, it really took me back. And with that, I sold more than I thought. Um, admittedly, I don't know, maybe it's a self-deprecation kind of thing, but I always have quite low expectations for that sort of thing. But they far exceeded it, and with selling more, you make more money. And don't get me wrong, I haven't made you know, thousands and thousands, but I did make more money than I expected. And I've always known that no matter how big or small of a platform you have, if you have the chance to, or the opportunity, or the option to give back, you always should. So I've decided I'm gonna give 20% of all the profits from the zine to a charity. I chose 20% because it's 2020 and I think some good, no matter how big or small needs to come out of this year, so I went with 20%. And I have got three or four charities in mind that I think are really deserving of it, but I really wanna get some input and hear from you guys. So if you work for a charity or even run a charity, or there's a charity within your community that has really helped out you and your family recently, or just been doing amazing work in the local community, please let me know. Um, local would be better because I know local charities have been hit so hard recently in the last few months, but they can be based anywhere. They don't have to be based in the UK at all. Then when I get them all in, I'll just make sure you know they're legit and then registered charities. And I'll use one of those random miser things to make sure it's fair to pick one of the charities. Um, so let's give it a deadline to be totally fair. So two weeks from when this video is uploaded, which will be so terrible working out dates. Do, do, do. Monday, the 23rd of November. So on that day, when I've got them all in, I will pick around a one and probably let you know. I'll definitely let you know via email and probably through a video or on Instagram or something. Um, yeah, so I'd really, really appreciate that. If you get in touch below my email, madisonbeachphotography at gmail.com. So that's it for the zine, moving back on to this new film. So it's called Phantom Kino 8 with an ISO of 8 and it's black and white. And to test it out, I wanted to test it out in two ways. First of all, because of the low ISO, I wanted to go with a tripod and a remote shutter. Then on the other side, I went with handheld. So first of all, with the tripod and remote shutter, I wanted to go somewhere on a nice sunny day. So I waited and waited and then looked outside, bam, sunny does not happen very often here in England at the moment. So I packed everything in the car and went to a local country park, which I was planning for this film. And there are loads of strong contrasts and tones created by all the shadows from the trees. And I knew it would just work so well. So I drove there and then I carried on driving in circles because there were no parking spaces. And I was just going round and round and round. So plan B, I drove on to Seaford, which is a town in East Sussex and it's best known for having incredible views of the Seven Sisters. And if you're not sure what they are, they're basically seven continuous cliffs. Been featured in loads of documentaries and films, Harry Potter. And when I got there, I kind of realized that actually it's one of those occasions where I was so glad plan A didn't work out. So I loaded up the film on my Pentax K1000, rated it at 20 as a Pentax didn't go down to eight and decided that later I'd push it one and a half stops after talking to my lab. So, ready to go, I geared up and set out in search for the best views. And some sheep.
So before we get onto the handheld shots, I just want to talk through my first impressions of this film. And the first thing I thought, the minute I saw the negatives, way before I even scanned them, was just, wow, that contrast is huge. I was metering for the shadows, but they're still so deep and dark. And then the whites are so bright and white. If I shot this film again, I'd overexpose it slightly, just to try and retain a bit more detail from the shadows in camera rather than in post, which I've done with most of these frames that you've seen in the video. I have heard a lot of people saying this film is really cinematic and it's hard to disagree. I mean, like with this shot with the birds, it's so creepy and eerie and really reminds me of a scene in this film, The Birds, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, where there's all these creepy birds flying around a house, which I then could imagine could be like this barn. You really wouldn't expect much screen with something rated at ISO of 8, and there is hardly any, only if you really, really zoom in. This is my favourite image of the Sim Sisters, as the sun hit it just at the right time. Although you will notice I was in such a rush to capture the sun, which was going in and out, the composition did suffer a bit, and it's actually only six and a half sisters. Now onto my handheld shots, and I spotted these balloons in this tree, and I knew I wanted to capture it, but matching a slow shutter speed of no tripod, I thought they were going to be a bit blurry, so I took two frames just to try and cover all bases, and ironically they both came out really nicely and not blurred at all. <laughs> The blood did come later when I was on a bus, but I think because of the cinematic qualities of this film, it almost lets you get away with it and makes it look a bit intentional. It also came good when I was photographing this neon sign at night. I metered for the sign as I didn't want the shutter speed to be too slow and also wanted the sign to be the main focus of the image. Then last up, obviously, a self-portrait, last in the roll. I focused the camera and then I rested it on the floor just to try and reduce some of the camera shake. This film creates really distinctive black and white images and it will no doubt appeal to film shooters, including myself. Ilford HP5 will still be my go-to black and white film, but with such strong contrast and a low ISO, there is definitely a place on the market for this film. So let me know if you've shot this film before or what you think of low ISO films and what you tend to use them for, because I know a lot of people go for either really strong gritty portraits or double exposures. And that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.